Hi, it's Marcus. I'm a third year student studying medicine at the University of Cambridge. In this video, I'm going to talk about Notion and why I think it's the best organizational tool out there. Anyone from someone still at school with a job to a retired person can use Notion to make their life easier. And I'm going to describe to you how I use it to make my life easier. I'm going to show you the features that Notion has, how to use them with examples. And finally, I'm going to give you my own personal take and how I use Notion to facilitate my own personal and professional life. So what is Notion? I use Notion basically as a replacement for Google Docs or Word, as well as a replacement for a notebook and an organizational booklet. You can also use it for reminders, calendars, sharing, and loads of other things. Let's start with pages. There are no folders in Notion. So everything is within pages like this one. Within these pages, you can give them a title, test page, and it gives you a blank canvas and you can do whatever you want with it. I like to think of pages in a few ways. Firstly, a page can sort of be like a big folder in which you store loads of files in. So a page like this would be like my uni page, which is just a page that has loads of sub pages within it. So the way you can create a sub page is by pressing this plus button and then adding a page and you create a new page within the old page. You can very easily create pages within pages as well as link pages to each other, which makes it really easy to navigate this essentially web of pages that you're creating. The second way I like to think about pages is essentially like text files. So for these pages, rather than having a bunch of different pages within them, you may have, for example, an essay. So this is a page for an essay I wrote last term, where essentially I treated it like a text file. And while I still do have a couple of pages linked in it, it is mostly just ideas and written text that is in this page. Secondly, we need to talk about shortcuts. The way to use shortcuts in Notion are by using slash commands. This allows you to create new content or manipulate existing content without even touching your trackpad. To use this, you add a slash and then you type in whichever type of content you want to add in. For example, bullet points, you put slash bull and it'll autofill to bullet points. You press enter and it gives you a bullet point. So my favorite type of command to use is the toggle command. Write slash tog, press enter, and it gives me a toggle. What this allows me to do is it allows me to create a heading that has text within it that is collapsible. This makes it both space efficient. So if I want to have lots of information within a couple of toggles, you can still keep it quite condensed while also not losing any of the information. What I've used this a lot for is making questions. So toggles are great for having a question and then an answer within the toggle so that you can hide these answers Answers, try to answer the question yourself and then see if you are correct. This is great for active recall and learning in a lecture-based scenario and such a great feature, particularly for students. Toggles are also really helpful to me in a class where I have to keep organized and having a few headings where I can collapse all of the information into those headings allows me to see the bigger picture and makes the class a lot more digestible to me. So now you know how to create pages, sub pages, organize your work and use the slash function to create different commands such as toggles. Next, let's talk about collaborating with other people. You can share pages and all sub pages within those pages with other people. In the top right, there is a share button, which literally just shares the page you're currently viewing with whoever you want just by typing in their email. This allows you to create whole ecosystems of work that are collaborative. So for example, in university, this is really helpful because you can easily share the notes you have taken for a particular lecture or share flashcards you've made with your friends, making all of this work very collaborative and easy to work together on. To access someone else's shared page, you just go to the top left and access someone else's Notion page where you can edit it and do whatever you want. Let's talk about different, more complex types of content that you can add into Notion. So once you have a blank page, you can just add a bunch of toggles, but this is a bit boring and you can do so much more with Notion. You can organize stuff into columns and blocks and you can make headings or toggle headings. You can also create links and backlinks. If you type at something, then it will bring up that page and it will embed it into whatever you are currently writing, allowing you to easily access it and go back to that related page. This is especially great for when you're writing essays that you need to reference different papers, or if you are an academic and you're writing a paper which you need to reference different articles. Also, if you're doing any sort of studying or research, this allows you to create links between things and bring things together in a way that isn't possible with Microsoft Word. So for example, here, I'm writing an essay in a particular module. However, I know that another paper written by some other authors in a totally different module might be relevant to my essay. And because I already have a page in Notion stored with some information that I noted down, that means I can quickly extract that information and put it into my essay and link everything together quite easily. You can also upload files, images, media, whatever you want onto Notion. 
This is great because it can serve as a sort of database, as well as embellishing your notes with pictures and stuff, which can be really helpful. You can also write math equations and code if you're into that. Finally, there are templates you can make, which can really help if there are certain page structures that you use a lot. For example, if you're a student who writes a lot of essays, it might be useful to have a template just for an essay page. So when you create a new page, you have the option to select this template and it'll immediately replicate whatever you put in the template. So for example, you might have toggles for your introduction, paragraph one, two, three, conclusion, and then maybe a couple of tips at the end to remind you while you're writing this essay. These can be really helpful in streamlining your workflows and making the work you're doing more efficient and easier. Let's move on to databases. I find databases to be really helpful as they allow me to see different sorts of information in the same way. I use this a lot for this YouTube channel, for example, and to keep track of the reading I'm doing for different lecture series. So look at this database, for example. It looks a bit overwhelming right now, but you can see that each paper is a page where I can add my notes to it, put the abstract in, and write down the main conclusions. In the different columns of this database, I can tag each paper for the attributes, such as if it is a review, if it's a primary argument, counter argument, or if it belongs to a particular lecture. Then I can write a short description of the paper, one that I can likely use in an essay, as it'll be in my own words, as the key takeaways from this paper. In this table, I can then look at all of this information in different ways. I can see this as boards, which are organized based on the different tags. So here you can see the different tags I have for each lecture, or the review papers versus the experimental papers. And I can also see this information as a list to help me browse through the different papers more easily. For things that are more project-based work, you can also add a calendar function where you can sort different projects by, for example, when they are due. For example, for running this YouTube channel, I have a column for the filming date and a column for the expected release date. This means that when I view my database as a calendar, it shows me what I'm meant to release and when. This has been a whistle-stop tour through the different features of Notion, and I do apologize if I went a little bit too fast. I do know that I miss lots of stuff out, and Notion has so many different ways of using it that it's really up to you to just explore and figure out what you can do. However, how I use Notion as a student in my day-to-day -day life, firstly, I use it to help me make to-do lists, figure out things like finances, and to organize things like my next trip. I also use it, obviously, to organize this YouTube channel. I use it as a student in lectures to take notes, as well as organize all of my reading for different lectures. I also use it to make flashcards for memorization. I'll make a different video on how to use Notion and Anki together to help you memorize everything that's in your lectures. And finally, I use Notion to share work with other people. I feel like this is such an overlooked feature of Notion. The fact that you can just share pages and everything is just combined. The collaborative aspect of it is such a game changer and I really cannot stress how useful it has been. Finally, if you're interested, there's also Notion AI, which is essentially chat GPT, but a little bit worse. Although I can see it becoming a really powerful tool as it can summarize your text um, or make flashcards out of notes that you've taken. That being said, I don't use Notion AI because it's paid for, so. One final thing, Notion is totally free for students. This video is not sponsored. I just really, really like Notion. <laughs> anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I try to reply to every comment. I'll see you in the next one.